Anti-Semitism is through the roof, and anti-Israel rhetoric is at an all-time high. But just when you think it can't get any more shocking, it does. No, this time it's not leading academic institutions in the United States refusing to condemn calling for the genocide of Jews, nor is it pictures of the hostages being defaced with wild conspiracy theories like Jews were behind 9-11 or that we should stop crying because some hostages still have their heads on. No, this time it took place in a country right on Israel's borders, one it actually shares a peace agreement with, even if a cold one, Jordan. Take a look at this, a new restaurant in town on the Jordanian side of the Dead Sea. What is the popular joint called? October 7th. Well, joining me now from New York is Dr. Nasir Alomari, a Jordanian writer and political commentator. Thank you for taking the time to be with me here this evening. This is not only incredibly offensive, it's simply grotesque. The biggest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust and the fact that it was even allowed to open, it's also now being promoted by former members of parliament, no less. What has been the response, if any, from Amman? Well, thank you for having me. Uh, you know, uh, this is a, a situation uh, in Jordan that is uh, getting out of control. Uh, the, you know, I condemn uh, that restaurant. Uh, I condemn uh, the approach that uh, many of my fellow Jordanians are taking uh, to this conflict. Uh, I think uh, th there is a legitimate uh, cause to call for peace, to call for ending this war, uh, praising uh, the killing of Jews or any other human being is uh, simply horrendous. Well, you have, uh, you know, this is uh, the, the war for hearts and minds, as you can see, has been lost in Jordan and uh, many, uh, probably most of the Arab world. Uh, so this sentiment exists in Jordan. Uh, Jordan has, is home to several million Palestinians uh, who, you know, who uh, resent the fact that uh, they live in Jordan. And they originally came from Palestine, or their parents came from Palestine, uh, and uh, this is a this is a sentiment that is fed by the by the Jordanian media. And the king, uh, who's a dictator, by the way, and who runs the media, uh, allows this uh, to happen because he sees this as a way to appease the street. In the meanwhile, uh, when you see the king, he talks peace, he condemns uh, terrorism, and um, he calls for the international community to help him and uh, to help uh, Jordan. Uh, so we have a double game going on here. Jordan, the Jordanian monarch, like the Qatari, Amir, like all of these Arab leaders, they allow the media to engage in uh, all, you know, supporting terrorism. However, they, uh, you know, turn around and they have wonderful relationship with Israel and the United States. Let's imagine, and I say imagine because you'll rarely, if ever, see this from Israelis or Jews for that matter. If eateries started popping up in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem with the names and dates of all the wars Israel won against the Arabs, the world would be in absolute uproar. And yet this seems to float right under the radar. And as you mentioned, almost a double game going on because Jordan actually does have decent relations with the state of Israel. Uh, exactly, and uh, and uh, the, that's the, the the game that uh, the King of Jordan uh, plays. He controls that country. There is no free media in Jordan, and he uses uh, he uses uh, this uh, you know sentiment uh, to uh, uh, to keep himself in power. He's telling the people, "I'm with you. Uh, go ahead and engage in whatever rhetoric you want to engage in." In the meanwhile, Jordan uh, and the King himself. It has close connections to the Israeli security forces. Uh, he's close to uh, uh, the U.S. and uh, Israeli uh, government's strategic thinking about peace. He's even against Hamas himself and his uh, late father. Uh, but they continue to play this game because it's convenient. And the king has the power to stop this and to stem it. He just uh, benefits from it. Uh, because he can speak from both sides of his mouth. And unfortunately, he has done it uh, very successfully.
And doctor, just very briefly in the last couple of seconds that we have left, there's a fortune of Palestinian refugees in Jordan. Many of them complain about xenophobic and racist attacks toward them. Don't you think that Jordan should be pretty much looking inward at their own treatment of Palestinians before pointing a finger at Israel? Well, they're not going to do that. Uh, Jordan uh, is, as I said, is a dictatorship. Uh, the king himself changed the, the constitution to keep himself in power. And he's enjoying this. He's playing both sides. Uh, he's aware of uh, all this uh, support for terrorism. He lets it go because that is how he stays in power. In the meanwhile, he preaches peace in the United Nations and he condemns Israel. Uh, but that is the game that he and the Emir of Qatar and most of the Arab leaders play with the United States and Israel. Dr. Nasir Al Omari, a Jordanian writer and political commentator, appreciate your time and analysis with me here on this breaking edition on I24 News. If anything you missed, make sure to check out our website at i24news.tv and Batty Leventhal. Thanks for watching.